in 1900. A railroad brochure featured the image of a man. The tents are up and so are the barricades. A man so infamous, the mere mention of his name elicits thoughts of pillaging, plundering, and drunken debauchery. By tomorrow afternoon, Bayshore Boulevard will be packed with pirates. And now, every year since 1904, Hundreds of thousands of people have descended onto Tampa to celebrate his life. Pirates have invaded the Bay Area, parading through the streets of Tampa, and they... He's been the subject of much speculation. Security cameras are also up and running all around. But who was Jose Gaspar? Keeping a close eye out for any scallywag. And was he real? Jose Gaspar's story starts in Spain in the mid-1700s, where he was a member of the Spanish Royal Navy. How he got to be a part of the Navy is up for debate. Some say he was a nobleman who had achieved high ranking, and others say he was just some bad kid who, when given the choice of joining the Navy or going to prison, chose the Navy. In every version of this legend, Gaspar eventually breaks bad and sets sail on his ship, the Floria Blanca, it lands on the southwest coast of Spanish Florida in what is now Charlotte or Collier counties. Here, in 1783, he established his base, Gasparilla Island, and a neighboring island called Captiva, where he allegedly held his captives, hence the name Captiva, though it is a very bastardized pronunciation of the Spanish word cautivo. He continued to be the most fierce pirate on Florida's west coast until the 1820s, when in a botched attempt to pillage a British merchant ship in the Charlotte Harbor, was foiled by the U.S. Navy. Here's where Gaspar's life on the sea comes to an end. Because Jose, instead of surrendering, wrapped an anchor around his waist and leapt into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. The only problem is, none of this happened. Through the years, historians have combed through the U.S. and Spanish archives and have found nada proving Jose Gaspar ever existed. There was never a Jose Gaspar in the Spanish Navy. And while the U.S. ship that allegedly led to the demise of Jose Gaspar and his crew, the Florida Blanca, did exist, it was documented to have been hundreds of miles away in Cuba at the time. With the archives leading nowhere, hope turned to the physical form. And budding treasure seekers scoured Gasparilla and Captiva Islands in hopes of finding some form of evidence that proved there was a base of operations on the island. But sadly, nothing was found. But in 2015, a new hope for Jose Gaspar's existence turned up in the form of a mysterious box hidden in an attic. While cleaning out their great-grandfather's attic, Maria found a human hand, ring, a tattered map, and 18th century coins believed to be Spanish and Portuguese. The curator of the Tampa History Center was contacted to authenticate the font, and after looking over all of the evidence, finally determined that the map in the box was that of Tampa from the 1920s. The coins were from the 30s, mixed with souvenirs from an earlier Gasparilla parade, and the photo was Ernesto's wedding photo. That mummified hand turned out to be the last vestige of a very unlucky monkey. Now, hear me out for a second. I'm going to share with you a story. Thousands of years ago in what's now present-day Turkey, a young boy's parents die and leave him with an abundance of wealth. A devout Catholic, the young man decided to use his new wealth to help out those in need. But he didn't simply give the money away. Instead, he would sneak into their homes and leave them a bag of gold. Now, while this may sound creepy, it may also sound familiar. That's because this was the story of St. Nicholas, the real-life inspiration for Santa Claus. Many legends oftentimes have a basis in reality. Paul Bunyan is said to be based on a French-Canadian named Fabien Fournier. John Henry is largely believed to be a real person, or at least an analogy for African-American railroad workers in the 1800s. And even comic book characters like Professor Xavier and Magneto were based off of civil rights leaders Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. So is there any real-world basis to the legend of Jose Gaspar? Well, yes. The name Gaspar specifically comes from Friar Gaspar, a Spanish missionary that visited Florida in the 1600s. He's the real-life namesake for Gasparilla Island and predates the first mention of the pirate Jose Gaspar by over 300 years. Sure, that covers the name, but a missionary hardly describes the life of a pirate. And for that side of the story, my friends, we have to look at Juan Gomez. Juan 
Born in Portugal, Gomez sailed to Spanish Florida as a young man. He made his home on the southwest side of the state, where he told great tales of his life on the sea, until eventually he met his demise in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Sound familiar? According to historian Greg Woodward, Juan Gomez worked as a fishing guide in Paso Grill and would invent these elaborate pirate stories to keep his guests amused. This is when the stories were picked up by the Charlotte Harbor Northern Railway and were printed in their tourist brochure. It's here in 1900 that we got our first ever mention and image of the legendary Jose Gaspar. Then, only four short years later, our first ever Gasparilla Parade. This is what I love about the legend of Jose Gaspar more than anything else. It's mischievous roots. The character was birthed from the tales of an old sailor and eventually snowballed into the icon of one of the largest regions in the United States. He's the inspiration behind professional sports franchises. He's the namesake for multiple festivals. Stars are shining bright around town this week. The Gasparilla International Film Festival is bringing a little bit of Hollywood. Bowl games, restaurants, several parades, including the third largest in the United States. And he's proved that despite not being real, a legend can still take on a life of its own. I started thinking about this when I was writing this script. For most of the US, the holiday season starts by dressing up on Halloween. And you watch a giant parade on Thanksgiving, you tell the tales of a fictitious character on Christmas, and then you party the night away on New Year's. And for many people, this is the best part of the year. And maybe that's why we love Jose Gaspar so much. It's because even though he's not real, he gives Tampanians, Tampanos, however you want to say it, the opportunity to experience the holiday season twice as many times as anybody else. The city is there. Wonder what old Jose Gaspar himself thinks of all this. Down there in Davy Jones' locker with Henry Morgan, Captain Kidd, and Blackbeard. Probably saying, times have changed since we were pirates. Exactly so, you phantoms of long dead buccaneers. Times have changed, and men's memories have softened. And piracy is now just a synonym for gallantry and adventure on the high seas. Long ago and far away. But now, the invasion voyage of the more or less good ship Jose Gasparilla is at the end of the line. The helmsman brings her in to a beachhead far up the river. Hey, thanks for joining me once again on another episode of My Dumb Question. Real quick, uh, there was one thing that I wanted to kind of uh, touch on in this, but I didn't really find the right area to kind of drop it in. But uh, the name Gasparilla is actually effeminate. So this would imply that Jose Gaspar actually would have been a woman, which I kind of like this idea that there was this badass pirate woman on the west coast of Florida back in the uh, 1700s who was just like kicking ass and taking names but like everyone was like embarrassed that they were getting their ass kicked by a woman so they just made up this idea that you know this Juana Gaspar or Josefa Gaspar was actually Jose Gaspar um I say screw it uh Jose Gaspar is not real so so I'm saying it from this point forward Josefa Gaspar and Gasparilla was all based on a badass woman pirate. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, once again, catch us on the Identity Tampa Bay. Catch us on youtube.com forward slash my dumb question. Every Thursday night, you can catch our live show on twitch.tv forward slash my dumb question. And we will uh, we'll holler, holler at you later.